JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Olenchowskas. Today is the 5th of May 2021. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, and by the way, there will be a bunch of charts that I will look at because uh, unfortunately there won't be any traders uh, tea time later on today. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, due to an important meeting. But um, nevertheless, guys, I mean, like I said, we'll go through some instruments um, to kind of see what's how we can prepare ourselves for today. Um, but uh, yeah, as always, before we do that, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to check us out here on JFD.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Uh, so jvdbank.com, there we go. And uh, yep, click on the research tab right there on the top. So uh, now then, the first one I'm going to pick up here is the Hang Seng Index. So um, last time I when I talked about this one, I said that uh, basically we got a nice break here through the lower side of the rising channel. And in a way, there is now uh, an increased chance for a further move south. However, however, I would prefer to wait maybe for a drop below this, this little area right here uh, which is I'm um, kind of approximately between the uh, 28,274 and 28,326 levels. So approximately around there, guys. Basically, or in other words, um, we have this 100-day EMA shown as the green line, which is currently providing decent support. So that's why um, wait for that drop, wait for that daily candle staying below this area. And if it stays below this area, then yes, um, further declines could be possible, but my next target will be this 27,505 territory marked by the low of the, uh, or should I say the lowest point of March, guys. For the upside, <clears throat> Well, for the upside, first of all, uh, we'll get rid of the um, this um, lower side of the, or in general, this rising channel pattern because uh, that's no longer valid. Um, but um, for the upside, I'll stick to some of the key uh, key levels here. Now, um, previously I had this this level here with the highlighted area um, around the uh, twenty nine thousand one hundred fifty two mark. So I'll still keep that on here here on this chart because still that presents uh, kind of a good level to watch but another one uh, which to it I mean this is gonna be probably it could te be tested earlier a little bit now this one right here the inside swing low of the 27th of April and that's roughly around the 28,793 um, if we climb above it we also could climb above the 21 day EMA now don't get me wrong of course um, not really focusing too much at this point on the 21 day EMA just because um, as you can see, the latest activity, we, we were kind of um, just oscillating around it. The only little kind of positive thing here could be that even if it, yeah, if it climbs, if it, let's say, if it continues to oscillate um, around this 21-day EMA, um, if it climbs, if the price climbs above the 21-day EMA, it has a good chance to move higher. Um, of course, if, if it gets a hold up somewhere around here, it might drift back down. But nevertheless, uh, we could already start looking at say, uh, the upside and, for example, and then adjust uh, or protect ourselves accordingly with stop losses. Uh, for example, like putting them on break even just in, in case this uh, reverses back down. So things like that could, could be done. And that's the reason why I will be uh, keeping an eye on the 21-day 
EMA because if it pushes above this uh, this this area, uh, if the price pushes above this area and climbs higher, but let's say then it continues to rally and overcomes this barrier, then yep, uh, well, um, it could continue in the northern direction. Now jumping into the German index DAX, um, so uh, the situation here is not very welcoming, I would say, for the bulls. Um, we saw that nice, beautiful decline yesterday, and uh, as I mentioned that to you on uh, um, on Monday, if you remember, uh, we were hanging around here, and I said that well, I mean, the fact that we could see a push higher, yes, but if this downside line continues to provide resistance, now another slide could be possible, and more sellers could start joining in if the index once again drops below the 15,150 level. Well, look. <clears throat> Look at this beautiful move, and not only that, we also managed to overcome this zero, uh, sorry, fifteen thousand and seventy-two mark. Um, and uh, well, I mean, we continued to drift lower. And uh, by, by the way, we almost reached uh, one of my targets here, the uh, fourteen thousand eight hundred four zone. We did reach the other one, the fourteen thousand eight hundred and ninety territory here. Uh, marked by the low of the 30th of March, um, but um, yep, uh, didn't really really reach this hurdle. Nevertheless, I'm still not kind of uh, disappointed with this. To be honest, I mean, this is a very good result. And then now, what's happening? And we can see that on the cash index, we are getting a bit of a corrective move higher. Um, we're currently trading at around 14,970 mark, so well above um, yesterday's close. Um, but still below this 14,072 zone. So what I'll consider here is uh, this. If we continue to co correct higher, but let's say we struggle to overcome this 14, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, 15,072 mark, uh, then another slide could be possible. But if we start climbing above it, then I'll, I'm going to take a neutral stand and uh, I'm going to kind of uh, wait and play the uh, kind of uh, play the waiting game here. And uh, then uh, uh, what I'm going to be focusing on will be the high of this week near the 12. Uh, let me just double check this very quickly. Um, so yeah, near near the 15,268 territory right here. So in order to go for the upside, I would need to see a nice good push above that. I do understand that it's quite a big of a move here, but guys, let's be say, uh, let's be careful and uh, let's not kind of um, uh, under underestimate the market because we've seen strong reversals in the past. So uh, again, uh, repetition of that that could be possible. So that's why uh, be very careful with that. Uh, but for now, for now, um, there is a chance for this one to maybe uh, correct a little bit higher. And uh, then uh, if this provides good resistance, if this 15,072 territory provides good resistance, then another slide could be possible. Uh, quickly on FTSE 100, also had a nice beautiful decline. And uh, yeah, um, it drifted lower and uh, kind of tested one of my areas or came very close to testing one of my areas here near the 6904 zone um, and uh, almost came close to this 21 day EMA as well so just fell shy with just a few points from reaching that but nevertheless good uh, result um, as you can see the barrier here the uh, the highest point of April uh, at 7040 did provide good resistance and uh, yep we had this slide lower looking at the cash index we'll see that the price is currently in around 6958 zone um, above yesterday's close um, but I'm still basically in this little kind of area um, I would like to call it maybe a range but to be honest it's not really a range um, <clears throat> And in order to go for the upside, well, it's pretty straightforward, guys. We need to see a pop above this 7,040 territory. For the downside, uh, we need to see a drop below the 21-day EMA, below the 6,903 zone. Um, and um, also, um, although I have this level right here, but one of the levels, just to kind of overcrowd the chart here, <laughs> um, this level here, keep an eye on that one, because uh, probably this one will be um, a more important one for the downside. The 6,000. 
um, 854 mark, approximately around here. This level acted as a very nice area of support here. Back from the 12th of April, then 13th of April, uh, 20th and 21st of April as well. So um, even if we drop below the 6,903 uh, territory right here, um, keep your eyes on the 6,854 mark right here. And uh, uh, because if that gets cleared, now the up uh, further declines could be possible. Um, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now very quickly on this one, um, it, it, this was very interesting because I'll get to NASDAQ in a bit because, well, actually, right, just jumping into it right now, actually, uh, because NASDAQ yesterday declined heavily, and uh, but the Dow Jones kept on getting, was, was supported um, still. So basically, we have a bit of a discrepancy here on the two indices. One is indicating for a nice, beautiful correction. The other one is kind of, um, let's say, continues to aim higher. Now, in terms of the in Dow Jones Industrial Average, to be honest, um, this idea that I've mentioned before is kind of working out. And uh, basically, the uh, what I said before, that in, if we see a bit of a dr drift lower here um, towards the 3,000, oh, sorry, 33,811 territory here, or even this 21-day EMA, if this all provides good support, we might see a nice rebound and a push back up um, towards the all-time high near the th uh, 34, uh, let me just let me just zoom in here, 34,257 territory. Now, if we take a look at the cash index right now, we'll see that the um, that the price is very close to that barrier. And uh, basically, um, let's see how this week is going to play out. But some things tells me that, well, we could be hitting a new all-time high this week. But again, uh, let's see how that's going to play out. Don't forget that we're still in the earnings season. Uh, we do have a few companies delivering that today so if you want to check out in uh, the earnings calendar um, but uh, yeah uh, for now guys uh, well, I would say like this given that we already had that rebound so we'll take a bit of a, a careful approach cautious approach and uh, basically uh, what I'm going to do here is of course I'm going to wait for that push above the 34,257 territory right here in order to get a little bit more excited with the upside now um, if we get a clear break above it, yes, of course, this confirms a forthcoming higher high and more buyers could join in. For the downside, I need to see a drop below the 33,687 territory right here. And then, yes, I could go for a bit of a larger correction to the downside. Uh, NASDAQ 100. So uh, look at this beauty here. Um, so previously when I was covering NASDAQ, um, I said that um, if we get a rebound from this highlighted area right here, the 13,880 zone, then yes, maybe an, uh, another push higher could be possible. But um, if we start dropping below the 21-day EMA and then fall below this 13,700, hundred territory now this is where it could become very interesting for more sellers and uh, yep uh, we could see a move, a move towards this upside support line taken from the low the 5th of March now look at this beautiful test we got that so now we're gonna be adjusting a few levels here first of all um, for the downside what I need here is uh, a drop somewhere below this 13,420 territory right here 2021 approximately around there and uh, that's the low of the um, 5th of April guys and uh, basically um, if we um, if we get a drop below this this of course would place the uh, index below below the um, below this upside support line and yep further declines could be possible and actually let me just quickly adjust a few levels here because no long some of them are no longer valid um, okay so this one's right here this one needs to go um, this is not valid as well let me just get rid of that as well um, and uh, yeah so there we go so for the downside these are my targets if we get a uh, drop below this uh, 13,421 zone um, initially what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna only target the Mm, the 13,181 zone here, uh, not far from that uh, 100 day EMA, and then I'll take it from there. If it provides good support, we might see a rebound, maybe a uh, move higher. Uh, but again, if um, this index, for example, right now, uh, rebounds from this upside line and travels back above the 13,700 territory right here, this is where it could become a little bit more interesting, guys, for the buyers. And um, 
uh, basically we could uh, maybe see um, a bit of an upside move here, maybe even back to the um, to the all time high. So keep that in mind. Again, also we'll keep an eye on the 21 day EMA there and then we'll take it from there. Now jumping into another index uh, here, uh, DXY. So uh, the dollar index. Okay, so this, this is where it's a bit of a tricky one here. Now, um, it's a bit of a mixture, and uh, in a way, the dollar index is showing willingness to move higher. However, the indices are also showing uh, showing willingness to move higher, and this is where the kind of discrepancy occurs. Um, normally, these tend to the, the, normally the, the, uh, the dollar is seen as a as a bit of a safe haven, and uh, whenever markets could kind of push higher, uh, DXY drifts lower. Now here we are having a bit of a um, like I said, a bit of a kind of a, a positive moment here on DXY. So what I would suggest is, of course, to be very careful, forget about the that relationship for a bit. Um, and I would say, keep your eyes on for now from the or in the technical picture here. And if we pop above the 91.4249 zone, or actually, in other words, if we pop above the let me just adjust this. This is no longer, to be honest, needed because if it's going to pop above this barrier, above the 91.42, it might travel further north because at the same time it would be placed above the 121-day uh, EMA and more buyers could join in. So that's what I'm, I'm going to be keeping an eye on here for now. At the moment, everything's looking quite posit positive here. However, guys, uh, don't rush into anything. Uh, I do understand that this could be seen as a potential bullish flag, uh, but uh, yeah, let's not, like I said, let's not rush into anything because, again, uh, we don't want to be um, caught out here on anything and uh, um, if uh, yeah if it starts just kind of moving sideways we'll just end up being in a bit of a range here so uh, for the downside I need to see a drop below the 90.87 territory right here marked by the low the Monday's uh, low and then yep we could go for a bit of a, uh, a, a downside move uh, gold Gold is stuck. Um, it's still struggling with this hurdle, the 1798 zone. I talked about it uh, on Monday and uh, last week as well. And basically, we're still not getting that daily candle to stay above the barrier. Um, well, uh, what I'm going to do here for now is basically wait. Um, this for me that doesn't really that doesn't really sparkle from sparkle for me here guys I mean because uh, again this is uh, <laughs> this is a bit of a tr difficult situation I would say I mean uh, it's stuck in between these EMAs it's it's struggling with one of these levels so here you no know, so that's I mean this is where I'm gonna leave it for now probably um, if gold starts gold starts dropping below the 1760 territory and stays below it now this is where I'm gonna go for a bit of a, a move lower here and uh, yep um, then we could pick I can pick up on that one there. Um, for the upside, as I said, the 1798 territory, that's what I need. I need the daily candle to remain above it in order to go for some higher levels. Uh, Brent oil very quickly on this one, popping nicely to the upside here. And, and you can see reversing uh, on Monday to the upside, then pushing higher. I mean, this is a, just a roller coaster ride here on, on oil. Uh, but most important, as you can see, this, this upside support line taken from the low of the 7th of April, well, continues to provide support. And uh, as I mentioned to you previously when I was covering Brent, that um, in a way, if, if it drifts lower here but fails to break through, let's say, one of these uh, one of these upside lines, this could still be seen as a temporary correction. So another push higher could be possible. So in well, that's what we got, kind of. And uh, but nevertheless, uh, what I was also saying that um, even if we get that rebound, uh, for me, preferably, I would like to see a push above the 68. Point ninety four, ninety five territory somewhere around here before kind of let's say aiming for some higher levels because basically that this level here is the is the highest point of April and uh, now we have kind of overcame uh, we have we have overcome this level um, and we're currently staying above it so that means there there is a chance for uh, oil kind of to push further north here towards the 71.28 zone right here and uh, then we'll take it from there guys uh, just to remind you quickly what that level was here not to mention the highest point near the highest point of March here but that's the highest point of January of 2020 20 guys. Um, in other words, the highest point of 2020. So uh, keep your eyes on that level. It's 
we're coming closer to it. Um, let's see if we can hit it. Ethereum. So um, the crypto world and uh, look at this nightmare. Um, well, nightmare for some, nightmare for uh, actually, and uh, a, a dream for um, not a lot of dream, but maybe more of a. Uh, uh, a fairy tale uh, for the buyers, I would say. So yeah, uh, here you can see that we had a good rally here, and uh, yesterday the crypto reached another all-time high, nearly 3,530 territory. And look at this reversal now. Um, the question here is, can we get a bit of a corrective move lower now? Given that we um, we had like we don't have really clear uh, support or, or, or levels right here, probably I'm gonna stick to yesterday's low near the 3,171 territory, approximately around here. If we get a drop below it, then I'll slowly start aiming lower. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna drag this one way too much to the downside. Initially, I'm just gonna aim for that 21 day EMA. Um, or uh, towards this, actually, depending on how this is going to play out, maybe this is then the level that I'm going to be keeping an eye on, the 2,858 zone. So if we get a drop below the 3,171 territory, yes, I'll aim for this hurdle right here, uh, the, th the 2,858, and then I'll take it from there. Uh, Litecoin, uh, so Litecoin is still kind of looking positive, I would say. Um, nevertheless, it found... but. It found it's currently finding resistance, I would say, near this uh, highest point of April. Uh, near the 335.36 level here. Uh, yes, we did overshoot it today, but we didn't really push further north. Now, this is not the all-time high for Litecoin, because if we scroll back here, uh, let me just click this. Um, there uh, there we go. You can see that for Litecoin, uh, the all-time high is somewhere around here. Uh, so 370 point seventy one if I'm not mistaken let me just yes so three hundred and seventy point seventy uh, eight. There we go. So that's the kind of the all-time high here for the uh, for Litecoin. Uh, so in a way, kind of I would say that maybe Litecoin does have still have room to go and test uh, some highs. But um, I would probably be very careful if Ethereum, for example, starts reversing sharply. Maybe others will follow suit uh, because Bitcoin lately is not the kind of the the leader uh, uh, on the board. It's it's Ethereum. So if Ethereum starts declining heavily, then maybe yep, uh, we could see other cryptos following suit. So long story short, for now. If we get another pop above the 335.36 territory, yes, I'll go to um, I'll go to some higher levels. Um, Bitcoin Cash. Um, so this one is also trying to make its way higher, and uh, yep, we are climbing above this uh, 1,041 territory. So. Um, can it push further north? Can it climb towards, um, uh, where's that, uh, the highest point of April here, uh, near the uh, 1,218 mark? But, well, I would say like this, that if it stays above this 10th, uh, this 1,041 uh, zone, then yes, I'll continue targeting the upside. Uh, for the downside, well, pretty straightforward, guys. I need to see a drop below this hurdle right here. The low of the uh, 4th of May here near the 932 mark. And then, yes, uh, lower levels could be met. Um, jumping into a few pairs very quickly, guys. AUD and ZD because I kind of need to quickly push through these. I mean, I do understand that there was a lot, there were a lot of instruments, but a uh, quick update on AUD and ZD. Um, as you can see, mm, today, yes, we or yesterday, as it, we popped above and stayed above the upper side of the falling veg pattern, but we didn't really climb above this hurdle, the one that I kept mentioning, and uh, this uh, 1.0793 zone. So we're still flirting with it, and uh, I would say that, yes, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside now, but um, um, uh, I need that pop above this barrier again. I need to, to see the daily candle remaining above this hurdle, and then higher levels could be met. So, but you know, in other words, guys, the idea of a uh, this falling veg uh, is kind of kind of working out for now. Let's see if it can. F uh, 
work out even better here by breaking the uh, 1.0793 territory. USDJPY um, also pushing higher. So yeah, I mean, uh, here it climbed above this 109.23 level, the one that I mentioned, but not only that, it also climbed above the this barrier as well, the 109.36. So in a way, a lot of positivity so far. My next target is the 109.96, or in other words, that psychological 100 and 10 zone and then I will take it from there guys. For the downside what I need to see here is a drop below the 108.43 territory and then I could go for some lower levels. GBP Aussie also something that I picked up recently or, or on Monday as well so I've mentioned this triangle pattern guys uh, that the pair was kind of coiling up so we needed to see a clear break through one of these uh, lines before kind of let's say targeting the next sh uh, short term directional move um, and uh, yeah we pushed higher but we didn't really climb above the two, uh, 200 day EMA shown here as the black line and uh, that for now I'm going to keep an eye on it and if you if for, yes the pop happened great if you managed to capture this uh, wonderful uh, we climbed towards this 200 day EMA, but now I, what I would need to see here at this point, um, given that we've already violated this downside line, which is no longer needed, now we need to see a nice good push above this uh, 1. Uh, 1. 1.8071 zone uh, in order to go for the upside. At the same time, the rate would be placed above the uh, 200 day EMA and more buyers could join in. Of course, don't forget uh, a possible another possible scenario where we could see a push higher, test the up this, this, this barrier and then drift back down and then test this upside line and then rebound again. So basically uh, forming a possible ascending triangle. But again, I can probably I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit. So let's just uh, stick to a simple, uh, more simple plan here and uh, wait for a, a push above this upside, uh, this barrier right here, the 1.8071 in order to consider the upside. For the downside in the short run, um, you can keep an eye on this upside line here taken from the low of the 26th of April, a break of it could lead to a test of this other upside line here taken from the low of the 16th of April. A quick update on Euro czar against this, uh, uh, so yeah, the Euro against the South African Rand, this is what I mentioned on Monday, um, basically the uh, the pair uh, is near this barrier, so um, basically we need to see a clear push above this area here in order to go for some higher levels. So this is still very interesting. Uh, we're still above this 21-day EMA, so uh, in the very, very short run, there is some positivity left. Euro GBP um, drifting lower bro broke this upside line, and this is one of those when I said that we need to see a break of this 0 0.8719 level first before targeting the upside. So, and that's exactly what I meant because as you can see, we kept flirting with this barrier, but we didn't really get the daily candle staying. So that's the, like I said, that's the logic of it. Um, you can see uh, we broke to the downside, so now there is a chance for uh, this one to drift a little bit lower. However, I'm only going to target right now uh, this 0 0.8589 zone. And finally, Euro USD drifting below the, or, or actually coming very close to testing the one psychological 1.20 zone, and uh, we are now coming close to this 1.1990. If it drops below it guys lower levels could be met if it stays somewhere around here uh, yes we might see maybe a bit of a rebound uh, but um, in order for me to now to consider the upside I would need to see at least a push back above the 1.21 zone and then we could take it from there but at the moment guys uh, it's leaning a little bit more towards the downside so let's see if uh, if we break below the 1.19 level. So guys, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful. I'll have to jump off here. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening, guys. I really appreciate your time, your views, your likes, your comments. If you want to catch my video tomorrow, uh, my Trader's Espresso is always 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful trading day. Stay safe, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.